Okay, today we are looking at the steering dampener off of a KTM 1290 Super Adventure. Uh, these, as far as I know, are also the same part on the 1190 and the 1090, but I cannot say for sure though, so don't hold me to that. The reason we are taking this apart is mainly because this one was leaking and I noticed now that it's apart it's been cleaned up there was a lot of dirt inside of here it was leaked this uh, shaft was all wet with oil and you may I'm not sure if the camera will pick this up but it sounds just well that was air at the end it sounds just like there's sand inside of it. I'll be real quiet. So, anyway, I mean, I know there's gonna be a little bit of noise from air and the oil and that sort of things, but if, if you had this in your hands, you'd be able to feel it's like chunky. It just feels like there's dirt or something inside of there. Uh, so we are going to take it apart and see if we need any new parts or if we can get away with just cleaning it and changing the oil. There's a view on that side as well. You can kind of see a little bit of dirt on the seal there, but for the most part it was pretty clean. Um, first thing you need to do, I've already done it on this uh, after it's off the bike, is you need to clean it because you don't want anything that's on the outside to get on the inside as far as dirt so once you have it cleaned you're gonna want to get some snap ring pliers and I'll try and point at this with my screwdriver here for that and that your snap ring pliers need to get that internal snap ring there take that out and there's also one on this side so let's do that going to be kind of trapped on here but that's okay don't be scared <laughs> okay and I have a nice clean clear bowl here just so we can see if there is any junk in there oh I almost forgot this cap on the end here needs to come off hopefully I can do it by hand see once the snap rings out there's a spacer come on spacer and then the seal is still stuck down inside of there and it's going to be the same on each end uh, there's the other spacer just fell off there okay so I'm assuming I've never actually torn one of these apart before but I'm assuming that if I move all the way this way I'll be able to punch that seal out And after some struggling, you will figure out what you need to do to get the seals out. Um, you have to have the snap rings out of each end. That one there, we already pulled the other side out. You'll have, the end of this will be sticking out about that far and it'll feel like it doesn't want to go any farther. That's just because you're bottomed out on this other seal. You can see I've pounded this one out a little bit. It still needs to go farther. So you'll have to be very gentle. Use a soft hammer, brass punches, whatever you need to do to get it out without damaging anything. Um, and I'm going to go back to that and we'll be back assuming that nothing explodes. Okay, as you can see, I got it out. Uh, you'll get to a point where I can't tilt it too far, the oil's coming out already. The shaft that comes out of this side will be flush here, so you can't just tap on it anymore. 
had to take what's this a quarter inch drive 12 millimeter socket put it on the shaft but inside the tube so I could push up and that popped the seal and all the rest of the guts out so let's dump this out and see what kind of garbage we've got inside of there You don't have to use a nice fancy clean bowl like this. I just did it so that I could see if there was any junk in there. And there are a few. Get some more light. Too much light. There are a few little pieces of junk in there, but it doesn't take much. And the oil is pretty gross looking too, considering. It doesn't do much for a living. Okay, I'm not sure if you'll be able to see this, but I just wanted to try to show there's a surprising amount of just junk inside of here, just little pieces of grit. Uh, the camera's only picking up a little bit of it, but I promise there's junk in there, so make sure you clean it out real good. Okay, we got all of our parts clean. I figured while it's a part, it'd be a good chance to illustrate how these work. I would imagine anybody looking for a video on how to rebuild a steering stabilizer is gonna understand how they work anyway, but I'm gonna show you because I feel like it, I guess. So, <clears throat> imagine if this were assembled, if this were back inside of there, this disc here, it can't move on the shaft. It's part of the shaft and it's sealed with this O-ring along the outside. And you can see my screwdriver here. Right there, there's a little orifice, and that goes all the way through. You probably won't be able to see it here, but oh kinda. So you have this chamber full of oil, and this is inside of here in the middle. If this arm, or well, technically it's a cylinder, a ram. If you want this to move that direction, the oil on this side of the cylinder has to get over to this side. The only way to do it is through the hole in this. So as it moves over, all this oil has to move through that teeny tiny little hole and that's just slow that's all it does it makes it move slow and then when you go the other way all the oil has to move from this side to this side same thing back through that little tiny hole and it just slows movement down so that your steering so that your handlebars can't do that action because it this is slowing it down just smoothing everything out you probably don't need to replace the seals um, unless yours are actively leaking which mine are so I'm gonna replace that seal and then the one on the other end it's still in here so I'm gonna have to pound that one out and there's an o-ring here and that looks like some sort of a little filter or a cushion or something I don't imagine there's really anything any reason to replace that. Okay, so I realized that I forgot to show you how to replace this seal if you need to do so because can't go that way because this is in the way. Can't go that way because this is in the way. So you need to either get this out of your way or this. And the trick is this guy here. Um, you'll see you've got this O-ring on here. Um, I already took mine apart and I ended up splitting the O-ring when I got it apart. So you'll want to be more gentle than I was. Um, but get your O-ring off of there. And then you'll see 
well, <laughs> there's a pin. Let me try and get some better light. Well, more light. There's a pin in that hole in there. And it doesn't take a lot of force. Um, mine ended up just falling out. But you take that pin out. I just used a little ice pick and pushed it through. Oh, come on, phone. See it sticking out more there? Shake it out of there. Now I can just grab it, pull the pin out, and now this will slide off the end of this shaft. See? I wish I had my tripod still. Well, anyway, that comes off the end of there. And then you can slide your seal and this. I'm not really sure what this is. They'll both slide off that end. You can slide your new seal on. Slide this back on. Take this. Put it back in the center. Put your pin in. Put your O-ring on. Okay, so for the sake of uh, making this a short project for me, uh, we are not going to wait until I get the parts and the oil to put this back together. I'm just going to show you reassembly, just reverse of disassembly. Uh, one note, while you have this apart, you've got a little heim joint right here. Make sure that moves freely. You don't want that to bind up at all because you could feel that in your steering. And you have another one here as well. It doesn't, um, oh, I can't think of the word. It doesn't do that one thing. It just spins. <laughs> um, but make sure that one's free as well. And again, this is just for demonstration because I'm waiting on parts for mine. Um, you're going to want to get your 20 weight fork oil and a syringe. I don't have one with me here right now to show you with, but uh, just a syringe, not with a needle, just with a plastic tip on the end. And inject your oil in here, and then work this up and down a few times. You'll see and hear air moving through here. You'll see the air bubbles coming up top. Um, try and get yourself a, something that you can stand it in and let it sit for a while and let the air bubbles work up and to the top here and then they can pop and the air can dissipate move it up and down again top it off you want as much oil in here as you can so that when you put your seal down there's as little air in there as possible um, any air that's in here especially when you turn it sideways is going to translate into an air bubble that sits along the top here and you could potentially have oops, a uh, skipping feeling as this moves side to side and the air goes through that tiny orifice there. Um, and even if you have too much, when you go to put this seal, drive this seal down, you'll be trying to compress the oil, which you should know you cannot do. So you'll have to drive it down. Oh, I was able to push that in with my hands. Um, and get a safety pin, a small needle, and very carefully insert it between your, your rod and the lip of the seal. And be really careful not to damage your seal. And just that little bit of lift, you want to put the needle in there, not all the way inside, but so that it's in past both lips of your seal. Um, and that will let the excess oil bleed out and you can just slowly keep pushing that down in there and well, I'm not going to go anymore, but I was able to get that started by hand so Then once it's full you've got your seals all the way down then you can put your snap ring or um, your spacer and snap ring in on this side Flip it over same thing on this side spacer snap ring and don't forget.
forget the cap on the end of this rod here. I'm not entirely sure what the purpose of that is, but it had it on before, so we're gonna put it back on. Um, in my case, the main reason for this disassembly was to address um, uh, my steering is wobbly. Um, I adjusted the head bearings. I figured while I'm in here, we might as well take this and put some thicker oil in it. Then I noticed that this seal was leaking, the one on this end. So I gotta wait for that part. Um, I did some reading online. It seems like 20 weight oil, fork oil, is a good option to put in here. Um, I'm not going to experiment with anything thicker or thinner. I'm just gonna try 20 weight and see what happens. Um, hopefully it will be a little bit better than stock. I always felt like the steering on this bike was a little loose. Um, my head bearings were loose, but that was causing like a knocking noise when I would hit the brakes. Um, hopefully some thicker oil in here will help things feel a little bit more stable off-road. And last note, when you go to put everything back together, and I probably should have mentioned this actually as part of the removal, there's three bolts that hold it on to the bike. We'll just pretend this is all put back together. Um, one of these bolts goes through here, like that, and then the other two are through this bracket up here. Anyway. Um, they're all three the same. Don't worry about getting them mixed up. You've got One thing I really like about KTM. They put a Torx and a hex uh, Just a standard bolt head on all of their hardware well most of their hardware uh, the Torx is a T40 I Yeah, a wow, that was a bad choice uh, T40 or you can use a 10 millimeter ratchet, uh, socket, or wrench. And hopefully that video helps somebody out. Um, if you have any questions, feel free to leave a comment. And good luck.